start of part 2 Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the natural successor to Christ by Ahmad Didat start of chapter 1 the final messenger wa mubashshiran bi rasulin yati and giving glad tidings of a messenger min ba'di to come after me Ismuhu Ahmad, whose name shall be Ahmad. Surah Saf, chapter 61, verse 6. Multifaceted succession. Successions are of many kinds, like the birthright of the firstborn, as in Jewish law, or the ascending of the eldest son or daughter to the kingly throne, or by election to select a candidate by the vote of the majority, or theologically, an appointment by divine decree of God's chosen messengers, like the call of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who were appointed or anointed in consecration to their office. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, succession to Jesus Christ alayhi salam, is multifaceted. 1. Chronologically, in history as a sequence of events in time. Number 2. By being chosen by God. Number 3. In the fulfillment of the prophecies of his predecessors. And last but not least, number 4. By bringing the guidance of God to perfection. For he will guide you into all truth, said Jesus Christ. Historically, the Holy Prophet Moses salam, preceded Jesus Christ salam, by some 1300 years and Muhammad wasallam, succeeded to that high office vacated by Jesus some six centuries later. It was the 12th of Rabiul Awal in the year of the elephant or the 29th of August 570 of the Christian era that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the praiseworthy, to whom all praise is due, was born in the sacred city of Mecca in pagan Arabia. His people, the Quraysh, remembered the year of his birth as the era of the elephant, because just two months before the birth of the child, Abraha al-Ashram, the Abyssinian viceroy of Yemen, had attacked the sacred sanctuary at Mecca at the head of his troops, riding a huge African elephant, a terrifying sight never to be erased from their memory and a still more shocking end to the invasion, the miraculous destruction of Abraha and his army as recorded in Surah Fil or the Elephant. Seest thou not how thy Lord dealt with the companions of the elephant? Did he not make their treacherous plan go astray? And he sent against them flights of birds striking them with stones of baked clay. Then did he make them like an empty field of stalks and straw, of which the corn has been eaten up. Surah Fil, chapter 105, verses 1 to 5. God's Own Standards God Almighty chooses his own messengers. He uses his own standards, although we may not always understand the wisdom of it. Paul cries the anomaly, for the Jews require a sign, miracles to convince, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Holy Bible, 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 22. But worldly wise as Paul was, he found that his wisdom was a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Greeks. God chose Moses, alayhi salam, a man who was a fugitive from justice and a stutterer, the Holy Bible calls him a man with uncircumcised lips. Exodus chapter 6 verse 12 Despite his difficulties when commissioned to confront Pharaoh, the great tyrant of the age, Musa a.s. cries out to the God of mercy. Moses said, O oh my Lord, expand for me my breast, make my task easy for me, and remove the impediment from my speech so that they may understand what I have to say. And give me a minister from my family. Aaron, my brother, add to my strength through him, and make him share my task. 
that we may celebrate thy praise without stint. And remember thee without stint, for thou art he that ever regardeth us. God said, Granted is thy prayer, O Moses. Surah Taha, Holy Quran, Chapter 20, Verses 25 to 36. Why suppose it? Then comes Jesus, a.s., who was chosen by God. According to Christian teachings, he was a carpenter and the son of a carpenter with a dubious genealogy as recorded in the Gospels. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 3, verse 23. Acknowledged today by a thousand million Muslims that Jesus Christ salam, was born miraculously without any male intervention. The followers of Christ created two separate genealogies for a man who had no genealogy. Between the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, they gave this mighty messenger of God 66 fathers and grandfathers. And of these two separate lists, only one name is common to these two lists and that is of Joseph the carpenter, who does not fit in anywhere because, as Luke records above, he was only the supposed father of Jesus. Even Bishops Doubt In a shock survey of Anglican bishops in June 1984, it was revealed that 31 of their 39 bishops thought that Christ's miracles, the virgin birth and the resurrection might not have happened exactly as described in the Bible. In defence to the bishops of the Church of England, the Anglicans, the Church of Scotland most respectfully omitted any reference to the virgin birth from its most recent publication. A statement of faith, the topic of the miraculous conception of Jesus a.s. is getting increasingly hotter for Western Christianity to handle as you see here. The Daily News, Durban, Tuesday, May 22, 1990 Virgin Birth Omitted by Church of Scotland London Direct reference to the Virgin Birth has been omitted from the Church of Scotland's new publication, A Statement of Faith, to avoid potential division among the Church's members. The Rev. David Beckett, Secretary of the Special Working Party that produced the publication, said the omission would move the Church of Scotland away from traditional Anglo-Catholic theology and towards the more liberal faction of the Church of England, championed by the Bishop of Durham, David Jenkins. The new document was debated by the Church of Scotland's annual General Assembly in Edinburgh. Designed to express the Westminster Confession, written in the 1640s in a more up-to-date language, the Church's panel on doctrine also took the opportunity to tailor the text on the virgin birth said Mr. Beckett, we want to come up with a statement that was inclusive rather than divisive, one that would be welcomed by the whole church, not just those who accept the virgin birth as a historical fact, but also by those who regard it as mainly pictorial theology. Leading churchmen claim the Westminster Confession has not been replaced, merely summarized and updated. Foreign Service and God chose Jesus alayhi salam. Jesus Christ alayhi salam, though spiritually rich in wisdom, light and truth, philosophized light-heartedly about the beggars of the world when he said, There came unto him, Jesus, a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. He, Jesus said unto them, For ye have the poor always with you, but poor may ye have not always. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 26, verses 7 to 11. But when destitution stared him in the face, when poverty, penury and need touched his own dear self, he cried pathetically. And Jesus saith unto him, the foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man, referring to himself, hath not where to lay his head. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 8, verse 20.
also repeated in Luke chapter 9 verse 58 and yet God chose him Jesus alayhi salam unique and inscrutable are thy ways o lord Mustafa the chosen one it is he who sent amongst the unlettered a messenger from among themselves to rehearse to them his signs to sanctify them and to instruct them in scripture and wisdom although they had been before in manifest error sura juma chapter 62 verse 2 amazing as it may seem i am not amazed any more for this is his way he chooses an ummi non literate prophet for an ummi illiterate nation a poor shepherd people roaming unnoticed in its deserts since the creation of the world a hero prophet was sent down to them with a word they could believe see the unnoticed becomes world notable the small has grown world great within one century afterwards arabia is at granada spain on this hand at delhi india on that glancing in valor and splendor and the light of genius arabia shines through long ages over a great section of the world belief is great life giving the history of a nation becomes fruitful soul elevating great so soon as it believes these arabs the man muhammad and that one century is it not as if a spark had fallen one spark on a world of what seemed black unnoticeable sand but lo the sand proves explosive powder blazes heaven high from delhi to granada i said the great man was always as lightning out of heaven the rest of men waited for him like fuel and then they too would flame This concluded the speech of Thomas Carlyle, one of the greatest thinkers of the past century. It was Friday, the 8th of May, 1840. His theme, the hero as a prophet. His audience were Anglicans, English Christians. The chosen people. God chooses his messengers and God chooses his people. In the realm of the spirit no nation was as favored as the Jews and yet Moses alayhi salam is made to bewail against his own people ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day i knew you holy bible deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 24 in this last will and testament of Moses alayhi salam the israelites frustrate their meek and gentle messenger who is forced to rail against their communal stubborn resistance and arrogant attitudes to God's guidance for i knew thy rebellion and thy stiff neck behold while i am yet alive with you this day ye have been rebellious against the lord and how much more after my death holy bible deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 27 alas how true I am not going to philosophize on God's choice but in the very next chapter the fire of God's anger is kindled to a blaze and he decries the Jews they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God they the Jews have provoked me to anger with their vanities and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation holy bible deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 21 Jews substituted anyone with the modicum of scriptural knowledge will be able to guess who in the eyes of these arrogant racist Jews is not a people a non entity and a foolish nation if not the Ishmaelite cousins the arabs who in the words of Thomas Carlyle have been roaming unnoticed in its deserts since the creation of the world the arabs Alexander the Great passed them by the Persians passed them by the Egyptians passed them by and the Romans passed them by it would have been an absolute liability for any nation to conquer and colonize them but the creator did not pass them by he picked them up from the depths of darkness and transformed them into torchbearers of light and learning to the world i will move them the Jews to jealousy this jealousy is a cultivated sickness Remember Sarah and Hagar the two wives of Abraham alayhi salam the friend of God the jealousy of Sarah was bequeathed to her children and on to nations and tribes yet unborn 
Not so long ago, I read a book on the discovery of medicine written by a Jewish medical man. I can unfortunately not remember the name of the author and fail to retrace the book. However, the wordings of the tribute paid by this Jewish author to his Semitic Arab cousins have made an indelible impression on my mind. And I quote from memory, Goat herds and camel drivers sitting on the throne of the Caesars. Full of spite, venom and sarcasm, but how true. This is what God did and always does. He honors whom he wills. This is what he does to show his mighty hand power. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ If ye turn back from the path, يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ He will substitute in your stead another people. ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْسَعَلَكُمْ Then they would not be like you. Surah Muhammad Chapter 47 Verse 38 it is surely one of the greatest miracles of history that from the backwater of Arabia they should have exploded a group of men, companions of a prophet, who within the space of a few brief decades were able to create a magnificent civilization extending from the Pyrenees to the gates of China. Abdul Wadud Shalabi in Islam Religion of Life The Last Warning the foregoing is the exact fulfillment of Jesus Christ, السلام, the last of the great Jewish prophets, own prediction of the displacement of the Jewish race in the spiritual guidance of man. In the words of the Master himself, Therefore I say unto you Jews, the kingdom of God shall be taken away from you Jews, and shall be given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 21, verse 43. End of chapter 1